see if maybe we can get a bit of a different angle. They do pop out somewhere where we can see them. Let's see, nothing around here. Hmm. Standing by. Okay, Cubby, I think maybe I'm just gonna go around and see if they've carried on. Okay, Cubby, I don't know if maybe you wanna try going around Weaver's Nest and I'll just go scratch around in the block, see if they've actually carried on moving. Alright, let's see if maybe we can find them somewhere. I think we're gonna swap places with Mike but in the meantime while we try to see if hopefully we we find these two leopards again let's go over to Brent and some of his stripy friends who are probably still in their pajamas now I've been trying to keep a secret but I think the secrets out the bag uh, the migration is about <laughs> A couple of weeks early. So what we saw earlier wasn't the main migration. That was indeed the local migration. But now we're with the front-running zebras that have crossed from Tanzania. I got word yesterday uh, that the migration had made its way towards the Sand River border. And that's why we got out so early this morning. And we've gone on a really long trip. And I wasn't expecting to catch them for at least another 10 or 15 kilometers. But here come the front-runners of the Great Migration. And so far, mostly zebras. Zebra, there's the odd wildebeest in amongst them, but isn't this just spectacular? There's just this line of animals coming from the south. Remember, hashtag a safari live um, if you have any questions for us. And uh, welcome to the start of the, uh, <laughs> the big bonanza. I don't even know how to describe this. I'm just so happy. <laughs> yeah. So we're about 15 kilometers from the Tanzanian uh, boundary. Those, and look at them, they're just streaming over. We're gonna keep heading towards where they're coming from. We're hoping to catch up with the main herd of wildebeest as well, the, the, the first of the main herds that, that is coming across. And just, and some tipple skirchies in the background, that Maasai giraffe. Here comes some wildebeest. So I said, not many wildebeest yet, mostly, mostly, <laughs> mostly zebras, but there we go, you can see that distinct white beard. Isn't this just too amazing? Now, of course, as wonderful as the migration it is, it comes with one slight um, human irritant, and that is more flies than you've ever seen in your life. I'm not sure what's happened. Uh, I think FC has f accidentally put me on hold, so I'm not, <laughs> not, not hearing them or getting any questions. I don't think it was intentional. Or maybe they are just tired of the sound of my voice. <laughs> mm. 
I can see some major panic happening back at Juma at the moment. It's the button that says hold. <laughs> well, anyway, we'll just keep chatting about the migration. So, um, it's... <laughs> As I said, it's probably about the main migration, or the, you must remember there's not only one main migration, there's multiple main migrations. Oh, wait. Ooh, ooh. Oh, they just hung up on you. They hung up on me. So, I'm assuming we're still live, so we're just going to carry on. Oh, there we go, they're calling back. Hello. Hi, guys. Can you hear me? searching for leopard. Okay, well we're not sure what happened with the comms there, but remember we are live and out in the middle of uh, the Maasai Mara in Kenya, isn't it fantastic? And um, we're going to keep trying to find the main herd of the migration while we do that. Let's hope um, Ali has better luck with spots because we've had lots of luck with stripes. Well, our spotty luck is not quite there yet. We are still busy looking for her and she's just gotten into an area that's quite tough. So lots, as Taylor would say, lots of bundu bashing around here. But it'll be all worth it if we do manage to find them. I think there we, is that? No, that's a diker. Some of the other guys have gone around just to other roads to see if that's the general direction where she's popped it, uh, where she's gonna pop out. But I think it's a bit of a tough one because the drainage is right here and it's quite a thick drainage so if they've gone down in there it'll be slightly harder for us to see them. I have hope however we'll be able to find them again. If not maybe it'll be worth it coming down this afternoon and just having a bit of a walk to see where maybe they went down. Let's see. Not around here. Uh, I we can try going down there. Still need to reverse a little bit though. Let's see. Might be slightly bumpy for us. Hmm. Where are you guys? Come on. Let's see. So we are in the depths of this drainage line. Just want to make sure that I don't go over a lot. <laughs> or maybe a few more than one. I'm sure they've got to be in here somewhere. But as you can see, it's all quite thick. Whoop! Big log there. It's all quite thick around us, so it's not that easy to try and follow them up. I think... I think let's try to go back up there and then we'll try our luck again. While we carry on bundu bashing and seeing if we can not relocate to Anna Taylor see how her leopard search is going. Well, I'm feeling a little bit frustrated, to be honest, because I don't know where these leopard tracks have gone. Well, actually, no, I know where the tracks have gone, but I don't know where the leopard is. So, I've got my very, very nice map over here that you can see has been living in my camera box for about 100 years of Chitwa. And we are exploring. We are trying to drive all of the roads here. Because I want to just check in these drainage systems and have a look. I don't know if anybody's even driven around here today. It's very quiet. I haven't seen another car in sight. So it could just be us. I think it's quite a nice opportunity then to explore. So I, I don't really know where I am right now and which road I'm on. Because I feel like my map is maybe not so accurate. Uh, but I am going to go the next possible left that I can take. I'm going to take it. And let's hope that it is coming up soon. Is this it? E no.
know. Now, I don't know if I've gone a little bit too far. <laughs> we'll just keep going. I hope we don't get caught. I'm not intentionally trying to drive somewhere where I'm not supposed to be. I just don't understand the roads on this map. No, we're not supposed to be here, I can tell you right now. See, I don't understand that. That's bizarre because uh, there's a whole lot of roads that I can drive on, but I don't know how to get to them because I sit and I look at my map and it says, okay, you must go straight and then you must go left. But that left, oh, sorry, Craig, that left just never came. So we shall go back the way we came now. I don't want to venture too far away from an area that I don't know. Can you imagine? I'd just be lost forever. Craig, no food? Did you bring snacks? Uh, Craig only bought an orange, so that'll have to last us. I've got some water. We can eat, always eat paper. I'm not joking, you don't want to eat paper. But, um, yes, yeah, so we wouldn't really have much to survive out here because there aren't really too many other fruits that we can eat just yet. Right, let's go exploring. Now I'm going to do a quiz with you in a moment. I'm just trying to find the quiz, the thing I'm going to do the quiz on. It's along this road that's a little bit further up still, but we're almost there. Actually, I'll go a little bit faster. See, there's a, I've just driven here. Where is it, Craig? Now don't shout out the answer either. I'm not allowed to tell anyone. I think I can see it up in the road. E is it? Or have I gone, have I gone past? Surely I have not gone past it. Look, it's up this way. Maybe around the next bend. We're looking for a big animal pathway as well. It's quite, it's near an animal pathway. Oh, so bumpy. Okay, around this corner perhaps. Nope. Yes, I can see it. Okay, we're basically here. And we're going to play the game, Who Dung It? So as you can imagine, I'm going to show you some dung, but I'm not going to get out the car or do anything like that because I feel like I'm going to give it away. So we'll just show you just there. From a distance, I'm not giving you size or anything like that. You just got to look at that dung and guess. This is tricky now. I'm going to change it up because you're all too good at guessing dung and guessing what animal did this. I can't get you anymore. So the only clue I'm going to give you that it is on an animal pathway. And that is the dung there. So hashtag Safari Life with your answers as to what animal you think perhaps would have left that dung behind. But you've got to be very quick, of course. As quick as you possibly can. And I know what, qu what answers are going to come through first and then I'm going to go no. So if, you th if you're thinking of the thing I'm thinking, you have to get it first time right. Let's see. Megan, am I cheeky in asking if anybody has already answered? Probably a little bit thinking hmm now Laura you've guessed leopard dung unfortunately that's not leopard dung might get I'm gonna wait for a couple more questions to come through and then I'll get uh, uh, questions a couple more answers to come through and then I shall get out and I'll show you why it is not leopard dung I don't want to spoil it just yet I actually don't even know if Megan knows the answer to this one Kyle, getting getting better. You've said possibly zebra. That's a much closer, excuse me, a much closer guess. So we're we're getting there. We're covering the herbivores. I'll give you a clue. It is from a herbivore. It most certainly is for a herbivore. Ooh. Now, Mama Boo, you've said it is a herbivore. You're quite right, but you don't get a point for guessing it is a herbivore. You have to tell me which herbivore it is. I don't know if anyone's going to get it, because it's a sneaky one. It could be quite... it could trick you, but I don't know. But I'll go in and I'll scratch and open it up. Ah! Geeky? You win. Spoiling all my fun, you've said hippo. You are correct, it is indeed from a hippo. Craig, please let me know if I get the, the break up. Because sometimes the sound, the sound doesn't like it when I go too far away. But you are 155 million percent correct in saying that this is indeed hippo down. And it's come from the dams down there, but probably moving through this area over here, feeding, and then decided to carry along this pathway. There are many hippo tracks which I've already driven over that are going up. But what you could get this done confused with quite easily is or my break. Uh, it's difficult because I yet I would I'm gonna have to go down. Just if I turn this way, is that better? No. 
Okay, well, we'll go with it for now. So it's quite fresh still, but what you get over here is there's quite a strong smell of sort of urine. It's a very strong uric acid smell. It's not great. It's typical from hippos. Now, you might be a little bit confused because male hippos, when they defecate, they swish the tail a bit. It separates the dung. They normally do that on the shrub. The female hippos don't do that at all. So they just sort of walk and, and defecate as they go along. And it does look very much like rhino dung. White rhino dung. There's only grass in here, and especially at this time of the year because the, the vegetation is still quite nice and light and well, at least palatable in in some of the cases and for the not so great grasses. So you'll dig through here and you shouldn't find any leaves or anything like that. However, in the winter months, this dung starts to change. I always find that their stool gets a little bit loo loose because they're eating things that they should not be eating, like leaves. And often you find round leaf teak leaves in their dung. But cool, very nice. So just hip. So that was a lovely game of who dung it. So well done, geeky. It was great. Let me get back in now. Ha ha! And let's see what else is happening. When I'll be. Woohoo! Mm. Now, obviously, we've been taunted with leopard tracks this morning and brief sightings of them. Ali, of course, is still searching far and wide, and I hope she manages to find those two cats. So let's go back across to her and see how her search is going. We are still searching. Unfortunately, the uh, it's quite a very difficult block to maneuver around. Lots of very steep deeps where they could go. Lots of trees, lots of places where they can hide. I think we are on a good road because we just had a squirrel alarming not too far from here and also there was a Franklin. So I do think they're still moving and there's another vehicle just this road eventually curves a little bit and there's a junction there. So there's another vehicle over there waiting to see if maybe she pops out because Again, we go in cars and we think maybe the animals move faster than what they actually do. But if she's steadily been walking this way, I'm sure she's going to end up somewhere around here. Or this would be the logical place for her to come out unless she decides to stay inside of the block, unless she's got something hiding in there. But we can always come throughout the day and maybe just, you know, get some of the help of a wonderful, very good tracker, Herbie. Maybe he'll be the leopard whisperer. But I haven't lost hope yet that they are around here somewhere. I just haven't heard that squirrel alarm calling again, so I wonder if maybe they've just gone down somewhere. There is also a possibility if it's a mother taking a cub, and then it's the same if it's Tamba that we saw him yesterday, pretty much on its own. It wouldn't be unusual for her to come back if she's made a kill, and now she's trying to take him back to wherever it is that the kill is. So if she did manage to make a kill, she will probably put it in an area which she considers it to be safe while she goes and fetches the cub and brings it back to the kill. It can be a very, very thick area. It can be on top of a tree. It can be at the bottom of a drainage. So many different choices for her. She's actually chosen quite well. And as we were driving around, lots of little dikers and impala moving around. So I wonder if, if she didn't manage to catch one of those ones for her and the cub. Or if she's just busy moving them across because also Trias Dam is not too far and like I said we had we've been having tracks going up and down quite a lot for different females into into that area. You see it's always the puzzle that we're trying to piece together. I haven't heard anything else for now. I'm sure maybe they'll pop out somewhere. Come in. Maybe, so let's just go check a bit further where we had that squirrel or alarm calling and see if maybe she does not pop out there because we haven't seen any tracks on the road of her and the cub maybe crossing. But let's see. We are going to carry on, always on the search. But in the meantime, let's go to Brent and find out if he, these are the same zebras he was looking at earlier on. Some zebra, Ali? Some zebra? There's um, uh, a few more than some zebra, but you can hear there's a few more wildebeest in this area as we keep moving closer towards Tanzania. Mm -hmm. 
movie sound like? Killing Marco Polo. about that everybody but you're back with us in the sabi sand Brent seems to be having just a couple of problems it's amazing how those gremlins must have snuck into one of their suitcases perhaps Jamie took them back with her on the long drive maybe they hid underneath the carriage of the car and got all the way to Kenya how dare they now we're still searching around here We're, we've actually moved off of Chitwa now and I think what I'd like to do is I think I'm going to take Ledwood I'm going to go all the way along up here and I know that the leopards were sighted whichever leopards they may have been around Twin Downs so just in case they did a sneaky on us and didn't go northwest uh, I heard one of the guides saying they thought they went northwest then we can have this eastern section covered as well we'll just have a little scratch around here uh, I don't know who it could be maybe it's Tandy and Tumba again maybe they've just done loops around us maybe the leopard tracks that I had on Chitwa are not theirs but it would be surprising though just because that's their sort of the heart of her territory it would only make sense that it would be her that would be roaming around there but we shall move into the area nonetheless and see if we can't help out out I wonder what's for breakfast today because I'm quite hungry are you hungry Craig? Too early. Have you you haven't eaten your orange yet? Not yet. It's getting snackish though. I can hear Craig's getting hangry. <laughs> right, let's turn up here. Oh my goodness, everyone's on safari. Nobody's got well doesn't look too dressed up this morning. It's actually very nice. We might have to take some layers off. I'm feeling starting to get a little bit on the warm side. Okay, so if they've gone that side, that's perfect, then Ali will hopefully find them, but I have male lip tracks here. Who is walking on our property like this and not showing themselves? Let me show you this track quickly. I don't see any more, I just see one. We shall examine to see how fresh it actually is. Okay. I'm just showing you tracks today and I'm just going to step away just so that you can see that little tracks so I don't cover it with my shadow but there was a male leopard walking here at some point I'm going to see if I can find any more just to confirm how fresh it is it's quite difficult to tell just from that it's on the edge of the road no one seems to have driven over it so it could be from the other day too because from where that track is coming from theoretically I should see some more tracks just here in front of it absolutely nothing there's many millipede tracks there's a couple of lines in the sand too but no more leopard tracks and if I look even further doesn't look like there are any here too let me just check here no no I just have to check a bit further now that I've committed who's alarming some it's a couple of birds that have started chatting and I don't know if it's monkeys or if it's something else along here. <whistles> Pearl spotted owlets in the drainage line are calling now. Have a little listen. Calling now. Sounds like there's more than one. It sounds like there might be two. One here, and there's another one responding just behind us. Okay, well that's nice. Right, let me climb in. Gowrie Gate. What am I listening to on the radio here? Let me just quickly try and jump on the radio here. Can the last station please repeat that message? What's at Gary Gate? Right, off we go. We're quite far away, but it sounds like one of the staff members that work for the Sabi Sand Gate have just seen a leopard. 
near the Gowrie Gate at the power lines. Whee! So we're quite far away, but I'm most certainly going to make my way in that direction because I can drive really quickly. Safe, but I can drive quickly. I should have been a race driver. So that's what we're going to do now. I don't know if anyone's ahead of us, but that's where we're going to be heading. We're still far. We're just going through the Mulwati. We're going to pop out on the other side. Right. So we're going to down towards the gate. So let's jump on board with her. Hopefully Taylor will have a bit better luck than us. So I think we are... I feel like a shark, to be honest. We're circling around the block <laughs> in hopes that we'll be able to see them around. I'm not too sure if it's worth for us going back into the block and searching, because the problem is, if they've got a kill, that's probably a very good area to keep it in. Unless they've managed to cross. So I think what I want to do is actually go around and recheck the same road, because it seemed that that was the definite direction that they were going to go into. Just to see if we managed to see it again. Yeah, I think uh, leopards are being quite cheeky with us today and just keeping, <laughs> keeping me and Taylor and Seb and Craig running around. Where is that Franklin? Okay, because you know we've had also a few Franklings alarm calling. Is that a leopard track? Can't see where I saw it now. I think not. Elissa, um, it is hard to learn how to identify the smaller tracks or when you see them nicely on the road then maybe that's not too hard but what becomes very very hard is learning how to trail the animals and follow them as they go walking in the bush as you can imagine the road is pretty much like a canvas and everything is a lot clearer once it walks in on sandy roads like the one we're driving on but when you have to start following onto the sides of the road and in between the bushes and the grass and where the soil is generally a bit harder then it becomes quite tricky to to try and see where they've gone so I have a feeling she hasn't come out of the drainage line yet so that's why I would like to do one more turn around the road that's just on the northern side of the drainage just to see if maybe maybe she hasn't popped back out let's see around here let's go up is it the track sorry Megan or the the patterns if they are asymmetrical in a tiger they uh, you want it's not like you know like a butterfly all of the the spots are different on either side so yes I suppose um, asymmetrical is the correct word because um, they are not the same on the one side so if you have a cheetah from the one side and you flip it around you won't be able to identify it using the same spots that's why a lot of the times when you're doing research then you ask for photos of the right side and on the left side because they're different funny enough I was talking to a friend of mine that is a, that um, does a lot of research for, well he's actually the person in charge of the wild dog research in the Kruger National Park his name is Grant and he was saying that sometimes they are do when they do the photographic senses of cheetah and wild dogs in the Kruger Park, it becomes a bit tricky because a lot of very um, good photographers go around and they'll take a photo of you know the wild dog and they'll make it pretty and they'll Photoshop it and everything else. So he said one of the toughest ones for him to identify was somebody that had managed to Photoshop a color out of the of the particular wild dog that it had photographed so it you know he was just like I'm sure I've seen this leopard before and it looks very familiar but I can't figure out which one it is and then obviously because not only had it managed to take the color out which I think it's you know quite a skill in Photoshop because I'm not too sure how to use Photoshop all that much and then the original photo the animal I think it was facing onto the right side but there is um a little trick where you can just flip it and then the right side will appear to be the left side because you'll pretty much do a flip of the photo so he was very confused when he came across this photograph and so he was like I thought I was looking at the left hand side all this time and it was actually the right one so that made it a bit trickier for him 
but um, yeah you need to look at both sides to see the, the difference they're not the same so it's always good because sometimes you can't really see the one patch let's see maybe we'll be able to find them again today See, Seb and I had a very strong feeling that there was a leopard watching us in Twindums and I wonder if it wasn't two leopards actually watching us. Because they were definitely there and I'm sure that squirrel saw them but maybe the squirrel got shy because they moved away. But oh well, we'll carry on trying our luck around here. Who knows. That's the beauty about the bush. Things happen when you least expect them to. I think maybe we should actually even pretend that we're not looking for them anymore and maybe we'll see them in the middle of the road posing for us. That would be quite nice. Let's see. I wonder if it's not worth also maybe trying to then go to the other dam and go from one dam to the next because we've had lots of tracks all around. All right, let's go to Taylor. Seems like she had some luck. Leopard, we've got a leopard and it's ca carrying something in its mouth. I think it's a scrub hare. Look, who have we got here? Just coming through the long grass. I think, who is this? Craig, can we take a closer look so we can just try and identify her quickly? Are you Shadow? I think it may be. Let's see, how cool is this? My goodness, I flew here and I flew just in the absolute nick of time. It was perfect. I'm gonna be naughty. I totally just took a couple of pictures there because this is just too beautiful to not. And just by looking at her, not a particularly large leopard. Hello, Shadow. My dear friend, I think it is our favorite little girl. But please help me confirm, hashtag Safari Live, if you can confirm that this is Shadow. We are now going to follow her, of course. She's on Juma. We're just off Triple M. And I am going to call the sighting in in just a moment. I just need to jump to the next channel let me quickly call it in but Megan if you get any confirmation as to which leopard this is please let me know but I'm I'm pretty sure that it is this is t this is the heart of shadows uh, territory let me try and go back quickly my goodness Craig did you enjoy that race here it was perfect and well it was worth it wasn't it I think so Especially to have this beautiful girl carrying something in her mouth. I, I got excited. I thought maybe it was a cub at first. And then I thought, oh, that's not moving around enough. Not a particularly big meal for a cat like this, but a bit of sustenance goes a long way out here. So we're just waiting for confirmation. Of course, my eyes are even watering. I drove so quickly. I didn't think we were going to find her. But um, I thought that she would have been long gone. But it seems as though the luck is definitely on our side for these last two drives. Hello, beautiful leopard. I might hear a strange noise. It's me rubbing. I'm just wiping my monitor. Now, James and Kyle, thank you for your confirmation. You have said that this is indeed Shadow. I thought so. That's why I said to you, those tracks that we had earlier around Twin Dams, I don't think that it was Shadow. I thought that was a little bit too far away for a territory. I know that the Karula is... I'm just going to keep following her. I know that Karula has... And we're not sure what's happened to her, but she's obviously not around anymore, which we are heartbroken by. But... It's just a bit too far, especially with a leopardess with a young cub to move such great distances. I'm going to jump in front of her again. And we're going to give her space. I don't want to pressure her. I want her to carry on with her day. So we're not going to drive right next to her, like, dropping all sorts of things. Now I need to get on the game drive radio at some point too, to try and let everybody know. Oh, we're gonna see. A, you might see something come across your screen, Craig's Just very quickly, gonna wipe the screen. It seems as though, well, uh, a spider web has decided to make its home on ca uh, the, cra the camera. Right. Let me quickly jump on the radio. Can any stations copy me? Let me. Let me quickly get hold of the guards. Can any Juma vehicles copy me or anybody driving on Vuyotela? Here we go. Hello, beautiful girl. No, no one is talking to me.
stations. I've located Mufazi Ingwe with a scrub hair bumba. She is mobile just off of Triple M, just underneath the power lines. Uh, I'll keep you guys updated, but you can get our visual from the road. It's just myself on lock. Okay, now she stopped for a little breather. Let's just watch her from over here because we're getting to a very, very thick area now. And if she goes into this drainage line, I'm worried that we lose her. And we don't want to give her any reason to move off further than she needs to. No, she just had a rest. She's picked up the scrub here again. Now, I'm sure she's taking it to her cub. Something like this she can physically take to her cub. She doesn't have to wait for her, her cub or to put it in a tree. Not that shadow. Wendy, this now is now is not the time to play games with me and be silly. I'm going to just try and keep an eye on her. But um, we know Shadow doesn't really put her carcasses in trees. Why she doesn't do this, nobody's really certain. No one can really know for sure. So she's probably going to take that to her little one. So we'll have a scratch here. I just... It's so difficult to maneuver. There she is. We're going to try and keep an eye on her. Craig, you're going to have to help me with uh, trying to figure out where she goes while I maneuver uh, through the thicket. Otherwise, I'm going to drive us and roll the car. And we don't really want to do that in an area like this. So, Craig, if you can please watch where she goes, I'd be forever grateful. All right, let's see. She's going to pop out just here. There she is. Let's have another look at her before she does decide to disappear again. Very nice. Hello, beautiful. Now, please keep coming this way. No, she's going through that little spot, which is going to be disastrous. Shadow, come back. Oh, no, she's just come forward again. She's just moving in front of the car now. I'm just going to watch her. There is a little gap that we can go through. But like I said, she's got a little one. I don't want to give her any reason to dart off into the thicket, so we'll let her move about. There she goes. Just crossing the frame. There, she can just see in the top right corner. Okay, that means we can move again. Craig, are you ready? <laughs> I think what we're going to do is we're actually going to have to send you across to Ellie now. I need to do some serious off-roading, and we need to keep eyes on this leopard. So while I get a better position, jump back on board with Ellie. How exciting was that? We are trying to find, well, the other sister. That's proving just to be a bit more difficult, but I'm very happy at least one of the family members decided to say hello to all of you and with, you know, breakfast. <laughs> we have decided to expand our search a bit more into this drainage line. Um, everybody else has left, but we are determined we're gonna carry on looking for her. If not, then we will try again this afternoon, but it's quite a, quite a, long system that we've got to navigate around so if she hasn't stopped moving since we last saw her she's probably quite a distance away so we want to go and check the next dam treehouse dam which is not too far from where we are see if perhaps they went there for a drink and uh, just keeping an eye on the on the tracks on the road see if perhaps we can spot anything else i have a feeling they're not too far they're just you know being leopards making us work hard for them but when we do find them, because I really hope we will, then it'll be so much more rewarding. More rewarding. Let's see. Hmm. Can't see any packs around here though. But I'm sure she's the one that we've been tracking. I mean, the two sisters have been all around. We are still looking for them, but while we carry on searching, let's go to Taylor, who's managed to relocate. Shadow is just walking past us now, just behind the car she goes. She's going to pop out on the other side. Here are you, girl. She's missioning quite a bit. She's walking quite a distance. I wonder where she caught this scrub here. Okay, I'm just going to drive over these trees. Goodbye, trees. They'll pop back up in a moment. I just want to give, like I said, I just want to make sure we give her enough space. There we go. That's quite nice now. As she goes through the open. Oh my goodness, that is absolutely amazing. What a beautiful cat. I'm being so naughty right now, I know. But I'll just say sorry later. It's just too good of a sighting. And please share us, uh, share these screenshots with all of us. Hashtag Safari Live, of course. 
I don't know when I saw a leopard eating anything, let alone carrying its kill in a very, very, very long time. Right, we go again through the bushes. No, I can't move that one out of the way. Wendy's a Titanic at the moment. It's so hard to drive her off road. Watch your head, you Craig. Now, I'm just going underneath a big peltiform here, just dropping the aerial. There we go. Now, Geeky, you're wondering, um, because it's such a small meal, is it for the cub only? I, I don't think just the cub. I think, um, I was going to say Trongile. I think Shadow is going to partake in devouring this um, small scrub here. I'm sure she'll eat some of it. Uh, it's very important that she eats as well, because if she isn't constantly feasting, even if it is just a small little treat, uh, then she's not going to have enough energy to potentially go out and catch something else. So like I said, uh, it might not be the greatest of great meals however it is a little bit better than not eating anything so this won't really be a meal so I'm just gonna try and no I'm just trying to call it in on the radio but it seems as everybody else is busy with all sorts of other things this morning and had anybody running to come to the sighting which is great I'll spend the entire morning with it now there's I've just spotted a Daker or a Steenbock just up ahead of her, she also looked at it. I, d I can't tell you what it is just yet. I can just see it behind the trees. Now, what could happen here, you can see Shad, look at her tail. She could drop it and she can try and restalk it, but I think the little antelope, I'm just going to wait to see what she does because she's walking straight towards it. I think it is going to, it has spotted her and is going to bolt away. Yes. Okay, let's go. It's seen her. It's actually coming a little bit closer, and that's not uncommon for antelope to do such things, to get a better view of what could be walking through the long grass. All right, I'm not losing this leopard today. Bye, Steenbok. It was a little Steenbok that we went, went past. I'm just gonna go under another wattle. And now there's Impala alarming. Hello Impala Ram, yes you've seen the leopard, thank you very much, but we found her first without your help. I'm gonna go all the way around. Whee! This is so much fun! So she's just going over there, you're welcome to watch her as we move through the grass, but like I said I'm gonna go the scenic route. How cool is that? Look how she just disappears into that golden grass. There's actually a leopard walking there, can you believe it? You might just see the tips of the grass moving around. And she's still going. Where are you leading us to? This is awesome. There she goes, just popping out. But we have to maneuver around again. Okay. We'll go through this way. Oh, I'm just going to go that side, but I'm going to go all the way around again. Now, Francis from Israel, as we try and get a better view of this beautiful leopard, you're wondering why doesn't she eat it now? I, I think it's because she's taking it to her cub. She has got a cub. I have not seen her little cub at all, and I don't even, couldn't even tell you how old it is. I'm so sad. I, I've been waiting for so long. I normally don't have much luck with seeing the cats when they are really, really young. But I have had some great sightings. So I think she's taking it to her cub. Normally, like I said, what she'd do if it was something bigger, she would have um, killed it and then she would hide it away, maybe even have fed on it just a little bit, and, and then she will go and fetch her cub and bring her cub to the kill. But that's not necessary. That is not needed here because there is, it is a very light, small meal, and she's able to mo move it around quite easy. Here she is. Might have to just be quite quick because she's going to be coming through some of these gaps. She's coming straight towards us. There she goes, just behind the car again. This is beautiful. Now, Megan, please may I have that name again? Did you say Lauren from Illinois? 
Yeah, I don't, it could be Lauren or Lawrence. I'm so sorry. I'm not 100% sure what the, the name is. But you're wondering, is her cub still suckling? Yes, most certainly it will be. And um, that's why it is so important that she keeps eating so she can keep producing milk. But the cub will be feeding on a combination of things now, uh, as well as that scrub hair, which I'm sure she's taking there, and also feeding on milk. Right, I'm going to go back again. Reverse here. Obviously, it's quite difficult because we're doing loads and loads of maneuvering. Right, off roading 101. All right, so I think what we're going to do now is we're going to keep trying to find a spot and keep jumping ahead of this leopard. But I'm going to send you back across to Ali, who unfortunately is not having much luck this morning. We are not having much luck indeed. We're gonna give it one last try around the block, see if perhaps we can see anything. But uh, some more news from the bush. Apparently Tingana is on Simamili not too far from Juma. So maybe he'll come across and pop across. I think Taylor's not too far from there. So I wonder if maybe he's heard Shadow or if he's aware of the fact that she seems to be somewhere around there. Could be quite interesting because then we would be able to get a bit more of an insight into what's been happening with Shadow lately and if the cub is still around or not. But I'm not 100% sure of where exactly Taylor is right now. But um, if Tingana does come around, it would be quite interesting because it seems like him and Shadow tracks have been might be popping around. We've gone all the way around Treehouse Dam and we've checked there. There's nothing that seems to be in there. So we're gonna do one last trip to Twin Dams. See if perhaps... Woo! So we'll see if maybe there's something around there. If not, I think maybe we're just gonna come and have a bit of a walk this afternoon and probably that'll be the best way to try and find them. But I'm not giving up hope. I'm sure we'll be able to potentially see where they are. I don't think Tandy knows that I'm just as stubborn as, he, as her. <laughs> I think though that she might win. Because me and Seb were saying like, oh, we can have one each. Each He can have Tandy because he, well, he prefers girls apparently. <laughs> and I'll have Tamba because I prefer boys. I don't know how Tristan would feel about it though. I think maybe he wouldn't be too impressed if I decide to swap him for a leopard cub. Right, I just have a feeling there's a very, very deep drainage there, so they could be hiding in there as well, and I've got no access to this particular area. So let's see. Because obviously as we've been driving around, there are a lot of trees, a lot of branches, a lot of patches of grass that look exactly like a leopard. So who knows, sometimes sometimes we get lucky, sometimes we don't. Luckily, Shadow came and say hello and hopefully maybe later on Tingana will be around. I believe the lions have been seen in Torchwood, not sure how many of them. From what I've been hearing on the radio, I think it's two females and a male that are not too far, well, they are in Torchwood, so it's not an area we can go, but I don't think they're too far from the boundary. And they were quite quiet last night, so I wonder if maybe they're not up to something, those ones up there as well. Let's see, let's see. Ah, but you see, while we're around here, and maybe we stop just to see if we can listen something out, I wanna show you guys another tree. Very interesting species of tree that we see all around this particular area, and it seems to be one of the favorites for lions and leopards. When they want to hide out, they go into thickets made out of this particular tree. And it's quite a sturdy tree, lots of little spines, so it's not an easy tree to maneuver around. And if I'm not mistaken, it's also a protected species of tree because it takes them a bit of a while to grow and you don't find them all over. Although all of these ones around here are not helping me make my point. But if you see, this one's around here, very pretty leaves, very waxy leaves and you know, quite sturdy. And it almost grows, I feel like this is how I look in the mornings when I wake up, like, you know, hair everywhere, branches everywhere and just a general mess. This tree is called a 
black monkey orange. So black monkey orange, it refers to the size of the fruit that looks almost like the size of an orange, so about this big, but it's actually of a green color. And the scientific name is Strychnos madagascariensis. Now, why am I telling you that? Madagascariensis is because it actually comes from the isle, I, no, the island of Madagascar. And Strychnos because it belongs to a family of trees that is very, very poisonous in some areas. As a matter of fact, not this particular ones that we get around here, but the ones found in Asia. And if I'm not mistaken, in particular in India, they use them to make a lot of poisons and drugs and everything else. And I think the strychnos part of the name actually comes from a Greek word. I think it means deadly fruit or something very dramatic like that just to ward you off that you don't really want to eat it. The African version of it is a lot friendlier. We actually do eat it and a lot of people use the seeds to make a porridge. But you don't want to eat too many of the seeds because then you might get an upset tummy because you know they have a bit of a this poison within them but nothing really that is going to affect everyone but the funny part is that when the oranges come out a lot of people in the local community they actually grab them and then they bury them on the ground just to try and prevent monkeys and baboons and bushbuck and any other creature from coming and eating them because they're actually quite tasty and um, yummy very very hard you can almost try to juggle with them but um not at this time of the year, the fruits are done, so we won't be able to see those ones for the next few months. But it is a tree that we find a lot in the northern Sabi sand. Back in the south where I used to work, you didn't find them as often, just in certain areas. I think they prefer soils that are a bit more sandy. But we find them quite often all around Juma and just in general over here. I think it's also because the seeds are so yummy. When the animals eat them, the seed dispersal, you see they disperse them all around where they've eaten. So where there was one, now there are multiple ones because they're all growing around. And an easy way to <laughs> to describe them, or an easy way that I've got to just know who they are, it's just because they look like very, very, very messy haired um, trees. They are quite something. We're gonna do one last loop, searching for Tandy. Uh, and in the meantime, let's go to Taylor and see what she's up to with all those leopards. You have no idea the off-roading that we just had to do. We fell into a whole network of tunnels. The ground sort of collapsed underneath us. Um, obviously some old warthog burrows where they'd been burrowing and doing all sorts of crazy things. So that was lots of fun, but we're okay. The car's okay. And we've still got shadows, so we're not doing too badly. But I can't see anything on the ground with all of this long yellow grass. Now, I, I, don't know, almost, I don't know how I didn't concuss myself because I almost whacked my face on the steering wheel. That would have been loads of fun. And we'll just check here. I'm just going to go over there. Keep up with her. I don't know where she's going because one thing that always amazes me with animals is how they're able to follow scent and how they remember areas so well. Because if I was a leopard and I left my cub somewhere, I'd be the worst mother in the whole world. I would never be able to find it again. So, Shadow, well done for doing that. I mean, obviously we're going to find out now if she does still have a cub, what her story is. She's just on the other side of that termite mound, going under some small leaves. But we should get another view of her. Here she comes. I'm going to just stop up ahead. And hopefully we will get a view. Please don't puncture my tire. There she is, just coming through here. Hello girl. So this is what you're going to have to sort of deal with now is on and off seeing the leopard and then watching me drive over all the trees and then back to the leopard again. But you can see she doesn't really mind us at all. She's very relaxed walking right in front of the car as long as you give her a bit of space. Now HA you've said that Shadow is quite a petite leopard. She is indeed. She's very small. She's not large at all. And her tracks are quite dainty as well. But so is Tandy. Tandy is not a particularly large leopard either. I, I don't find any of the female leopards up here to be relatively big. But let's carry on because she's getting, she's putting too much distance between us and her. Especially if we need to whack by a knob thorn. Especially if she, uh, if we need to go through another dodgy section again. Now I do need to try and tell the other guides where we are because I actually have no idea anymore. We're on Juma somewhere. We sort of passed and piled the planes, but what I am going to have to do is put my GPS on. Where'd she go? So 
So I'm gonna have to put my there she goes. I have to go all the way around now. There's lots of black monkey orange here. Yeah? So while I do my bundu bashing back into Ali's vehicle, you go and hopefully she's got some surprises. All right. Seems like there's a lot of action going around. Hopefully Taylor will manage to relocate and just see wherever Shadow's going. I'm sure it's been quite an exciting morning just watching her and the scrub hair in her mouth moving along the grass. And I think she hasn't stopped walking, so it's quite amazing what a long distance they managed to travel with something so small in their mouth. I think we've just actually had a very pretty kingfisher flying ahead of us. And off he goes. Seems like it was a brown hooded kingfisher. There was a leopard around here, so you better watch out. Why are those Franklin alarm calling? I want to have one last look around here. See if perhaps she hasn't gone any further. I have a feeling she's not too far from here, but obviously being a leopard hiding is what she does best. So we're going to give it one last attempt. And let's see. Ooh, come car. Let me. There we go. Just gonna go back onto the last spot where she was seen. And maybe we'll be able to see anything, pick up a track. Maybe I can go for a bit of a walk, see if we find anything around here. But we'll see. If not, well, <laughs> I hope you guys will enjoy the scenery just as much as we are. As it's a, it gets a bit tricky to find open spots. As we've circled all of the area where she's been in and she hasn't come out so I'm sure she's in here somewhere. There are also lots of big trees so maybe she's decided to take a break on one of the trees. That would be quite nice seeing a leopard up a tree. Haven't seen one up there for a while. I'm just gonna try and find out where to go around here. There seem to be lots of fallen off trees. Oh, very big log around here, so I can't really go around here. Maybe around here. I think I'm not gonna try to go in too far, just out to where we last saw her. Maybe see if she actually did carry on walking in the direction she came from because like I was saying yesterday we had a female calling and we had tracks coming all the way from quarantine onto this area so it could have been shadow maybe it was even her that she was up there and then she moved all the way down because leopards can walk quite a bit of a distance especially if they're trying to bring back something to their cub but while I speak of that why don't we actually go and see what a leopard does when it's got a kill in its mouth. Let's go back to Taylor and see how Shadow's doing. She's here, look at her. She's walking right in front of the car, very gracefully just stepping over that branch. Still carrying her prized possession, the scrub hair. How great is this? What an exciting morning. I hope that you're all very happy to see young Shadow. And I'm going to do my absolute best to try and stick with her until she finds the spot that she's going to rest or she reveals her little cub. Now what will be of course a sign that she still has a cub is that when she stops if she does start to call that would be very helpful. Okay we gotta go again. There's lots of medlars, lots of bush willow growing in here. The grass is tall and Craig has to keep an eye on her while I try and keep her safe. Hey eh, Craig? We don't want to be falling into anything. No, that's you got to be so careful and that's why I'm so excited for winter because at least with winter you can see what's on the ground below you now now we need to try and find a way around her because I don't want to drive behind her so I think it opens up a little bit up here so we'll let it just jump in front and then we'll we'll go around but there's too many termite mounts there she goes she's going off to the left so that means I'm just going to give her a couple more meters See, like I'm following at the moment, she's about 40 meters in front of us, so she's quite a distance away. And I always feel that that's very important uh, when you are following cats, is not to try and follow them right up their rear end. Some cats don't mind it, but it's just not 
uh, pleasant on a road is maybe slightly different because it's a lot quieter experience but I mean as you can all clearly hear we are crashing through the trees and stuff like that so I'm making sure that I do give her room I give her a wide berth and she's shown us she hasn't run away from us she's actually been quite easily to follow she hasn't started taking the sort of more denser routes which is normally an indication that they're going right I'm sick of you chasing my tail I'm going to drop you and leave you looking for me so I'm always quite happy when that happens oh my god wow well it seems as though bundu bashing is a trend today we're doing it Ali's doing it I hope she doesn't get any punctures <gasps> no punctures that is my biggest fear when we go bundu bashing that we're gonna get a flat tire not because of the flat tire itself but because it slows us down so much but um, we've got some kudu around here probably a good indication that there's no leopard I think these two leopards have moved up somewhere else so we are gonna make our way onto another area perhaps see if there's anything around I think they have one seven are very disappointed because we really 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 wanted to see them and we were so close to showing you guys Unfortunately, it seems like they chose a very, very complicated path for us to follow. So we haven't been able to quite get there. So we're slowly gonna get, make our way out of here. Because this is the, roughly the last spot where she was seen walking. So it's been quite some time. I'm pretty sure that she's already left the area. So unless we find her on a beautiful tree somewhere, I think she's probably just walked into a completely different direction. But oh well, we've given it a try and you guys have been along for the ride. So like I said, if you do by any chance manage to see any eyes looking at us from where you sit on the screen, just shout using the hashtag Safari Live and let us know leopard, 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 leopard. and we'll be quite happy to see it. But I think... I think they've gotten the best of us. Big luck there that I don't want to go over because I don't really want to get a puncture. So let's go around this way. It also doesn't quite help when I'm quite small. I think Craig was making fun of me yesterday because he said I need to put on more blankets because I'm too tiny and he can't see me all that much. Lulu, you want to know if you think we'll ever see a honey badger? Funny enough, this morning when we were looking for Tandi uh, just after those squirrels started our alarm calling, Seb spotted two honey badgers running across the road. But it was so quick, we just could see, you know, just the shape of their necks going and then the grass is moving and the dust that they left behind. We couldn't see the honey badgers and it was two of them running. It would have been fantastic to show you guys, but they were so quick. I think they were running off somewhere and we just couldn't see them again. We really, really <laughs> were surprised at how fast they were. Because they were just, you know, gone. But who knows, maybe around here we'll be able to see some more. Maybe a pangolin somewhere here on the road. Just, you know, for the bush to apologize for hiding Tandy and Tumba away from us. As you see, the, as I was saying, the grass is still quite long and there are thick bushes around. So it's not hard for them to find a good spot and just hide underneath. I think now we need to make a choice. Ooh! It's getting a bit thick. Mm, I think maybe... I don't know where I'm gonna go now. Just trying to find the path with the less resistance, as scientists would like to say just to try and make our way out but I think it's probably around here trying to find an area that it's a bit more open because the road is not too far from where we are it's just getting there that's proving to be a big log there proving to be a bit harder let's see I think we've managed to find a highway now. Mm. We're gonna be able to get across? Yes, we are. All right. I think it's safe to say that 
these two leopards are hiding for the day. So we're gonna see if maybe throughout the day we manage to find them again, but unfortunately for now, I think I'm gonna call it a defeat. I think the leopards have got like a thousand points and me and Seb have got maybe, should we give ourselves one point for trying? I think maybe, okay, well let's give ourselves two points for trying. <laughs> one for you and one for me. Because we have tried, but oh well. Always good to try. Let's see. I think we're managing to find the way out. Onto where it's nice and green. I can see some trees in the distance. I'm sure our final destination is not too far away from here. See an old two track. So clearly there's been a sighting here not too long ago. Off we go, whoop, 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 whoop. Pierre, in the bush per se, there aren't really any speed bumps, just logs and old trees that have fallen off or that the elephants have knocked down. But um, on the actual roads where we drive, there are some speed bumps. Sometimes they also have a double function. Not only are they, you know, just to make sure that everybody slows down as they drive, but also as a, to block the rain. Because sometimes you can imagine there's a bit too much water coming in. So they deviate the rain out of the water. Some of them are quite high. There's a particular one that, near quarantine that always gets me. I always forget about it and then I have to break because it's quite steep, so you know. Poor cameraman on the back always end up bumping. But um, I'm aware of it now, so yay. Actually, there's one not too far, so if you see in front of us on the road, that's over there just after the second shady spot, that is a speed bump. And see, sometimes we put them in there just to make sure that everybody drives at a certain speed because obviously while we're around here, sometimes if you come from the city, you just want to drive very fast because why not but here in the bush i find it that the slower you drive the better it is because then you're able to pick up little things that might be around let's go find ourselves something else i'm feeling quite confident that there's something else out there waiting for us but in the meantime let's go to taylor who wants to show you her pretty girlfriend well, <laughs> still off-roading Annie and I think it's the most off-roading I've done in a very long time but Shadow's taking us straight back towards uh, Philemon's hotline by the looks of it. I'm just trying to check on my mobile device. Let me turn my phone the right way around. Yes we're on a road now. What road are we on? Open. We are on Rebecca's. She's crossing Rebecca's. We should update the sighting. Let me do that quickly. Remember, I saw one unlock with us, Mavazi Ingwe. She's just crossed Rebecca's Road. She's going in a southerly direction and um, back towards sort of Philemon's cut line. She's moving through the block. There we go. Date that sighting again. Now I'm trying to clip my, as you can see, my ponytails in the air. Ha! Stick into my hat, please. Ah, thank you, Karen. So I was wondering how old the little cub is, and I knew it was around February somewhere. And Karen, you've confirmed it um, that the little one was born in February. So, what are we in now? February, March, April, May, June. Four months old. Okay, maybe even four and a half months old, just because we didn't see the cub straight away. Let's sneak through here. So, that little one's definitely still relying on mom. Now, yeah wouldn't be able to survive on its own at all. It really does depend on its mother still suckling. And then again, look here, she's coming right past the car. She's gonna pop out right here. How cool is this? She's on just on a massive animal pathway. Hi, big girl. You have walked a very, very long way, my lady. 
that is so impressive how quickly she is covering ground and it also just shows you how quickly and easy it is to lose a leopard but let's jump in front again she's on an animal pathway again and it's not unusual for a cat like that to walk on an animal pathway especially if she's dragging something she's got of course this scrub hair in her mouth actually make it a little bit easier so I know where that's going to pop out I'm gonna race around hold on Craig Craig's go down Bushwillow right Ooh, up and over we go again oh, I'm so sorry it's so difficult to try and navigate through here I'm trying to constantly trying to find gaps squeeze Woo, it's raining silver cluster leaves She's still going on it, so I'm just trying to find this way around. Now, Fizzle, as we drive around here like a maniac, uh, you're wondering, what were you wondering? Can you have a question again, Megan? It went in one ear and it went out the other. I'm so sorry. Oh, yes. Any, any idea of what distance she's walked? Um, I would say she must, she must have gone about at least two or three miles already. She's moved quite far. Here we go. Uh, just gonna move back a bit. She's coming. There she is, Craig. Right here. So she has moved quite a far distance. I can travel even further than that. I'm just making sure I give her enough space on the animal pathway in front of us for her to walk on. Here we go, girl. Look at that. And she said, Thank you very much, Taylor. Thank you for leaving a gap. And I let her go. How cool is this? I haven't seen Shadow in such a long time. I can't even tell you when the last sighting is that I had. But I tell you right now, it was not as good as the one we're having. This is the best shadow sighting I've ever had, so I shall remember it for a long time to come. And what would make it even better is if we see her reunite with her little one. Oh, here we are. We're on Fulamon's dip cut line now. Mavazi Ingwe is now crossing Fulamon's cut line. Oh, Megan! <laughs> Megan's updating me about what I'm doing. Sometimes we always pick up the wrong radios. She's still going. So this was Shadow that was moving around here last night then. The tracks that we had uh, going around this area. So perhaps everyone was right in saying um, that it was Shadow that we saw the morning before. Um, we didn't get to see her, but Rexon did see her. And that's quite interesting. She's going now straight towards Shibamu. And this is where we were driving around last night and I thought that she'd maybe just been in the drainage line but she's been busy she'd been moving around this area for quite some time so now whose f tracks did we see earlier this morning who which female leopards tracks did we have because shadows come from completely the opposite direction and we had tracks on the other side of the Mulwati so I wonder who that was so it have been Tandy and Tamba that were seen around Twin Dams. Perhaps now there's going to be a battle between Shadow and Tandy as to who keeps this territory that Karula has left open. Maybe they go because they're sisters, they're kind. It's probably not going to happen because nature is not kind. And um, maybe they're going to just share it in half or they're constantly going to overlap in this buffer zone that has been created. But we can only just really wait and see. But I'm sure there will be an altercation. Uh, there will be a conflict between Tandy and Shadow and I hope that when that happens we're here to witness it oh my goodness right we have got to duck we got to duck and dive underneath these bush willows now Ali was looking at some warthogs but I think she's just left with a cloud of dust Yes, the warthogs have run away. We are in the very, well, we were when we saw it in the very close proximity of the hyena den. We've decided to come and have a look, see if perhaps we got lucky here. But I think with all this commotion, all these leopards moving up and down, the lions roaring on Torchwood somewhere in the distance, I think maybe all the mother hyenas are just busy moving around and trying their luck everywhere else. So there is nobody at the den, or rather the parents are not at the den and the little ones are inside. So we're not gonna stick around here because obviously we don't wanna put any pressure whatsoever on that precious little tiny, almost bare thing that we saw yesterday. And we're gonna leave it. Hopefully maybe later on um, they'll come around or if not, you know, we've always got tomorrow or oh, this afternoon to try. I think um, Taylor, if I'm not mistaken, she's not too far away from us. So 
seeing that Shadow's got a kill, I wouldn't be surprised if the hyenas actually got a sniff of it or if they know that there's something happening and they could potentially be also just trying to find it. There were lots and lots of tracks of hyena all around this morning and if you were watching you might remember that this morning we had lots of leopard tracks around there that we were looking for. Unfortunately some of the tracks were driven over so we couldn't find the tracks again but I'm sure that's Shadow we've been following since yesterday because obviously now she's gonna she's done a big loop and she's come back pretty much exactly the same way that we were looking at. Oh there's the warthog in front of the road but also running away now. I think maybe he was just being a bit curious. Yeah. Hello mister. Do you know that hyenas live here? I don't think he's too bothered. Hmm. Very brave warthog. Right, it seems that this area is a bit void of life except for the warthog that's busy running around. So we're gonna see if we can find anything else around, perhaps at Gowrie Dam, who would be a good place to go and check, see if there's any life around there. It is getting quite hot, so I'm hoping that maybe some elephants will appear somewhere. Let's see. Christy, you'd like to know how often we see baboons. Well, I didn't see any yesterday, but the day before and the day before that we saw them. The unfortunate thing about baboons is that they're very clever animals and they are often hanging around by where the where the camps are, the lodge or the staff accommodation, and they come and they love wrecking everything and destroying everything because they can get to food a lot easier than that. So we'll see them, I think it was actually not at Inga's, but at Yuri's house that we saw them pretty much for two days sitting around and then I think was it yesterday or the day before Sam we just got back home and they had made a mess everywhere there was rubbish everywhere oh. hello giraffe tracks rubbish everywhere uh, whew. doors that were being opened um, we've actually had to door or baboon proof some of the glass doors at Angus just you know we put sticks and they still haven't figured out that if they take the stick out they're able to open the door because they I think they're curious and it's also so you know they're, they're stubborn it's a bit of pride as in like I know how to get in I will get in so a lot of the times they win so we used to have a very naughty male baboon at Simambili when I used to work over there that he was terrible and when I mean terrible you have no idea how bad he was he used to terrorize all the staff first of all very very big teeth but the same baboon had learned that glass couldn't break him if I can put it that way so we had him once the doors of the kitchen were locked and throughout the day the staff or the kitchen staff had gone back home to rest for a little while before coming back for lunch and in that gap the one came running and jumped into the window broke the window and got into the kitchen and then started eating all the prep stuff that the chefs have left behind oh my goodness they were so unhappy with this baboon can you imagine all your morning's work destroyed but a brave baboon that decided to jump into a glass window, break it and get in. And not too long afterwards, I think we also had him, there was a staff member that left the curtains of his uh, room open and he had some pup which uh, is uh, made out of maize meal or maize wheat and you boil it and you get almost, um, it's very similar to a polenta, very very typical dish around this area so he had made quite a big pot of it just to have it later and he left it close to the window and the curtains open, open and the baboon saw it from outside and also jumped into the window broke the window and then got all the pup and just started running all the way around so <laughs> I think it's proof that they're quite fierce animals maybe we're heading towards quarantine so they sometimes hang around this area so I wonder if maybe we'll see some of them around here could be a good place for them to be. They also do like warmer places and it's not warm enough for them to have come down from the tree where they were roosting in so could be. What are these pretty tracks on the road? Hyena! Hmm I wonder if this is not the mom that has now decided to go in this general direction because these are quite new tracks. We'll see we're gonna carry on around this road see if we can find anything else for you guys to enjoy with us but in the meantime let's go to Taylor and see what Shadow is up to 
Well, we're gonna have one last look at her. She's gonna cross out here and go into little gallery now. Let's watch her. Get onto the road. Here she comes. She's trying to find, you know, behind or in front. So here, yeah, she's gonna go forward. I'm just gonna go forward just slightly. Here we go. But this is the end of it, so it seems as though our dear friend, the little one, is not on the property. It is elsewhere, but you can get a few last uh, screenshots. But I think that's exactly where she's going to go. Bye, Princess. Princess Shadow. Thank you for an incredible sighting. It was uh, very, very kind of her, of course. How great is that? And then off she goes. Now, like I said, we got to follow her for quite a large part of the morning which was really really nice lots of bundu bashing was done well, she goes just over the top of that log and she's going to disappear into the long grass so I'm glad I'm glad to see that she's taking her kill elsewhere it does mean that she must have that little cub still otherwise she would have stopped and eaten it uh, quite a while ago but really 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 nice bye shadow now I've got to take all the sticks out of my car that was great. And let me just update it over here. I'm gonna see we near what road are we near? I have to find it on my app again. Mobile's lost visual of Mufazi English. She's gone into Little Gari now. Um we sort of between Zoe's junction with Philemon's, we just slightly south of that. Uh, but she's still going relatively south like as if she's going towards Little Gari driveway, but in Little Gari. There she goes. Might be able to get another quick view of her. And off she disappears. How exciting! And I'm sure that you all absolutely loved that. I have no doubt in my mind that that would have brought smiles to all of your faces. And I'm sure you got loads and loads of screenshots. So make sure you share them with us. Lovely. Now, I'm sure a lot of you are wondering why on earth she's put so much effort into dragging that scrub hair around. And Jules, you are wondering exactly that. Um, yes, there is, because every small meal really does count in the bush. Like you said, it's not really enough sustenance for Shadow to have a good meal as well as her cub who will be devouring uh, the carcass too but it's like an energy booster it's sort of like would you rather go hungry and not have anything and have that really terrible sort of hunger pains and you feel lethargic or would you grab yourself a snack bar and have that and that will keep you going for a couple more hours and that's exactly what's happened with that scrub hair. Shadow probably wasn't looking for something so small. She may have been stalking impala, a bushbuck in Yala, something or even a Stienbok or a Dekka, something along those lines. But unfortunately maybe she just wasn't good enough on the day and she wasn't able to catch one of those antelopes which she would have preferred. However, as she was maybe stalking one of them, uh, a little scrub hair made a silly move and ran out or she was intentionally stalking that scrub hair snatched it up but she'll take it on and then go and eat it a little bit later so I'm actually very excited about that that's really good we will come back here and check a little bit later uh, this evening and we'll keep an eye out because Shibamu pans are right here they're not far at all and I don't know how far in she's going to be but I think we've got the closest a bit of water so we could see her coming back and forth after she has had that carcass so we'll check here this afternoon very nice Now, Maritza, you're wondering if she's traveling further away due to the lack of prey. So the la lack of prey is something that is not around at the moment. The amount of impala and daker and steenbok and things that are about are uh, unbelievable. You know, what's happening now is that Shadow is moving into areas. Tundi is doing exactly the same thing that used to be occupied by Karula, but they're not there anymore. So like I said earlier, it's giving her an opportunity to try test other spots and in and, and different hunting ground and Karula has a great territory there's lots and lots of food around here we often used to see her on kills in fact I remember when I first started I think I saw more leopards on kills just from Karula supplying food to her her cubs than any other leopard I've ever seen before so uh, there's definitely an abundance of food here so she's she's just expanding her territory now she's found all these new spots I mean I don't know if uh, shadows how far shadows and Shadow have come before, uh, 
um, but at least they're here they're around they're closer onto our traverse and it make and it's actually a little bit better around here I think I think because of all the watering holes and because it's starting to dry up now the leopards are starting to come and hang around these areas because the animals have to drink a lot of the antelope species are water dependent too so they don't just drink once a day sometimes they will even drink twice a day and moving around in these drainage lines is only going to provide The ones that are feeding on leaves. Ah, oh, so exciting. Well, it seems as though Ellie has obviously got the scent of breakfast in the air because she's already found herself on quarantine. Oh no, we just had a woodpecker perfectly perched on the tree and we wanted to show you guys, but I think he's a bit far now. Um, you see the ones to the left? You see the the two ones that are like this. Show me on the screen there, right? Uh, here. Yeah. On this one, somewhere in there. So we're gonna. That's where I last saw him flying into. There he is! Yay! Well done. Yeah. Um, he was there. I'm sure. I think he's just gone behind the tree now. But you definitely got him earlier on. I'm not too sure which woodpecker it was. Maybe it was a bearded woodpecker. But uh. uh He's just gone all the way behind and we were driving along this morning here also and we started we heard him you know just pecking onto the wood making his little nest or perhaps a bit of more of a territorial call but it's good to know that there's around here I wonder if maybe later on in the year we'll manage to find maybe a little tiny nest for them that'll be quite cool with little crazy woodpeckers but for now it seems like they are not here this is a good area for birds. All of them are now starting to come out and move around. Always happy to see woodpeckers because they remind me of that cartoon. I can't remember the name. I think it was... I don't remember. The... of the woodpecker. I think he had a friend that was... what was it? Woody Woodpecker! Yes, thanks Meg. I couldn't really <laughs> recall the name of him. But he was quite a beautiful one. We've got a few butterflies also flying around here. Let's see if maybe we can just have a look and find out which one this is. It looked like an acria to me flying around somewhere around there. And an African vagrant. I think Brent would be happy to know that some of his butterflies friends are still around. Winter hasn't taken all of them from us yet. They will go and then they, they'll hibernate. Ah. Let me see if I can find the little seed here. Because I am busy looking at a devil thorn. Beautiful plant with uh, flowers of a funny looking color. I think maybe if I go like this, I'll be able to show you guys a bit more. Let's see if there's one around here that they normally don't grow attached to the ground. So I can just pick it up and show you guys. There we go. You see, very beautiful little plant. And uh, they've got all these beautiful flowers with little spiky seeds inside, but they get the name from, wow, this, I think this is the biggest one I've ever seen, from the seed of the plant. Let's see if maybe I can try and lift this plant up without destroying it. So you see here, Seb, is that good for you? Yes. You see, this is why the plant gets the name devil thorn, because of the fruit that looks like a devil, because it's got two tiny little horns. And this is a massive one. I've never seen these thorns get so big or this you know <laughs> but isn't that tiny little thing cute so part of the reason why they have this little hooks here or these two thorns is so that when animals walk around especially big 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 animals like kudus or impala they'll step on them and then they get attached to the bottom part of their feet and as the animal move around then they drag the fruit oh now i can see a lot more now that we've stopped and they drag the fruit all around and they take it and that's how this plant starts dispersing. Huh, nice. I thought maybe we were done with all of these pretty plants for the season, but clearly not. Some of them still have flowers, which is always good to see. Some color amongst all the yellow grasses. Huh, definitely the biggest fruits I've seen so far. Let's see, I wonder what other wonderful tiny thing we'll be able to see. Huh. I think maybe you see now everything's starting to be a bit more active. I don't know, say if we can try to get you the vultures flying all the way up there. 
as you see it seems like we are in a bit of a tricky spot because they keep uh, moving all around but I promise you guys that they are somewhere in the sky just circling I think they've just the wind is starting to blow so they've gone onto a bit of a more complicated spot there we go we can just see them clearly now and they're all it seems to be white backed vultures moving around they're coming in and out of our frame just because they're being blown away by the wind sorry I think I'm I'm, <laughs> I'm testing everyone's tech skills around here but you see that tiny little point that looks like a fly that is a vulture going up in into the sky seeing what else there is around. So a lot of the times when they start flying around here they'll be able to spot things like shadow and Taylor looking for shadow and while we carry on enjoying the view of the vultures let's go to Taylor and see if she can see the vultures perhaps. <laughs> what an exciting morning we have all had yet again I'm smiling from ear to ear with just absolute joy on uh, the last 24 hours have been quite uh, exceptional with Tamba yesterday and then well I'm pretty sure we weren't far behind him this morning he was just giving us the slip or whoever was, was walking around on Chitwa was definitely giving us the slip with those guinea fowls that were alarming there was definitely something there maybe even Tangana had made an appearance but hopefully this afternoon Ali's going to have a chance <laughs> at finding some spotted cats so I think she should be the one to go and check around uh, the Shibamu pants to see if maybe we can catch a shadow in the act coming to quench her thirst after her scrub hair meal. But wow. And the plains of quarantine seem to be quite quiet and the only thing you had with Ellie was some flowers and some butterflies. Well, the crowned lapwings are heading back to their normal spot. Hello guys. But again we don't have very much time left for, with you but I hope that you have all enjoyed it just as much as myself and Craig and Seb and Ali have so a big thank you to all the lovely ladies in Final Control and Anwar Anwar's not a lady for all the hard work that you do that no one sees and to all of you again a big thank you I look forward to seeing your screenshots and we'll see you for the sunset safari